So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Giuseppe Curigliano. I work at the European Institute of Oncology in Milan. During the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium, I addressed the topic of uh, immunotherapy beyond the triple negative breast cancer. Specifically, I provided the rationale to explore the role of immunotherapy in R2 positive and uh, in HR positive disease. In R2 positive disease, we have already preliminary data from two trials. A proof of concept trial that is the Panacea trial, published two years ago, and the prospective randomized trial that was the CAVE 2 trial. In both trials, we have a response rate and progression free survival rate that is improved when we combine entire two therapy plus uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. In the first trial, the combination was uh, trastuzumab and uh, pembrolizumab in heavily pretreated patients. And the inclusion criteria was only for R2 positive and PDL1 positive disease. In the second trial, there was a combination of TDM1 and atezolizumab. And also in the context of this trial, eligibility was based on PDL1 positivity. Both trials, of course, provided the rationale to explore immunotherapy in a largest trial, that is the CATE 3, including a larger population of patients are 2 positive. And I would like to remind another important trial in their two positive disease, that is the Astefania trial, exploring the role of TDM1 plus atezolizumab in the high risk population in the post neoarivan setting. So, this is specifically a trial designed for patients with their two positive disease following neoarivan chemotherapy and with the residual disease following surgery. What's about HR positive disease? The only two trials that I would like to mention are the GELATO trial and the JADA trial. Why? Because finally, in HR positive disease, we don't have so strong evidence of potential activity of immuno checkpoint inhibitors. In the CELATO trial was explored a combination of carboplatin and immunocheckpoint inhibitors for metastatic patients with invasive lobular cancer, where usually we have upregulation of G signatures that can be related to a potential predictive of response to immunocheckpoint inhibitors. In the gelato trial, a preliminary signs of activity has been observed with this activity. In the JADA trial, we have a neo one setting for HR-positive HER2 negative disease. And in the trial, we have a combination of AC for three cycles, followed by immunotherapy and endocrine therapy in the neo one setting. The study has been designed to assess according to PAM50, the molecular subtype, the molecular intrinsic subtype of patients included in the CHARA trial. And uh, not surprisingly, the patients who achieved the pathological complete response were only the patients with a basal-like subtype. So in the A, HR positive disease, we need maybe to wait for FL7 results in which chemotherapy plus nivolumab has been explored in both uh, neo one setting and dari one setting in the high risk HR positive population, including also ER low, that we know very well are patients that usually are more similar to triple negative rather than to ER positive disease. So in conclusion, when we consider immunotherapy in the population beyond triple negative 
and uh, we explore the activity in HER2 positive and uh, HR positive disease. In my opinion, we have a strong rationale to explore the combination in HER2 positive disease where the immune response is more effective and where we have preliminary data of potential efficacy. Less rational maybe to explore the activity in HR positive HER2 negative disease where, of course, we have less mutational instability, we have less expression of the antigens. I believe that in the future, much more role there will be for potential role of vaccines in this population. Preliminary studies explored the activity of HER2 vaccines in both HER2 positive and HER2 low disease demonstrating a potential benefit in preventing the appearance of invasive disease when used in a true positive DCIS. And also a potent immune response was induced used using a two peptide in trials that had been completed in the beginning of 2000. So now that we have so advanced technologies to produce vaccines, also due to the pandemics of COVID-19, I believe there will be a revival for the use of cancer vaccines in the future. The more new antigens we will discover, the more powerful can be this approach, mainly in the prevention setting or potentially also in the animal setting.